And finally, Dr. Shaw, uh, I have a question for you staying on, on the subject of Cuba, because earlier this year in April, you testified before this committee, and I asked you if USAID will remain committed to reaching out to people suffering under closed societies and dictatorships. Your answer was yes. And in September, President Obama spoke at the Clinton Global Initiative and stated that the administration, quote, will oppose attempts by foreign governments to dictate the nature of our assistance to civil society and oppose efforts by foreign governments to restrict freedom of peaceful assembly and association and expression, end quote. That is a good quote. Yet this, this week, there's a column in, in the uh, Associated Press that says uh, everything to the contrary. According to news reports, USAID is planning on rolling out new regulations that seek to prohibit USAID from working in closed societies. By coincidence, it seems that the new regulations are in line with a, a certain senator who has been pushing to normalize relations with communist Cuba. And these attempts by Castro apologists may be a backdoor deal to uh, secure the release of Alan Gross. I certainly hope not, because Alan Gross is innocent and should be released immediately, unconditionally, without concessions to the tyrants who have held him unjustly for over five years. So Dr. Shaw, is it true that USAID would consider dropping programs wherever USAID was denounced? And if true, it would only benefit thugs like the Castro brothers and Nicolás Maduro, Rafael Correa, they will use this as an opportunity to gloat that they got USAID to cave and run away from its mission. Why is USAID calling and running away from democracy programs in, in Cuba and Venezuela and Ecuador, Iran and Russia? And will you, and if not, will you come out and, and set the record straight? Dr. Shaw. Certainly will. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. And I just want to highlight, I do want to stay focused on uh, Ebola in this context, but I can assure you that the, I'm standing by the answer I gave you previously, that we are going to continue to work in difficult environments on de democratic governance programs as we have for years. Uh, the framework to which the article refers uh, is one that we are eager to discuss, I know have been discussing with your team, and I'm eager to discuss in more detail with you. I do not in any way believe it diminishes our commitment to that objective, uh, and I can discuss how it's being implemented in that context. And I appreciate your comments about Alan Gross, and, and as you know, uh, we work continually on behalf of uh, articulating why he should be released through our colleagues in the State Department. I would like to just make reference previously to the, your comment about the $52 million spent in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea on health. It's quite worth noting that over the last five years, in all three countries, we have seen rapid reductions in child mortality and maternal mortality because primarily of expanded access to bed nets for children who would otherwise get malaria. Those reductions have saved a lot of child lives. And in fact, just over the last eight weeks, We've had a massive bed net distribution throughout the region because malaria patients present with the same symptoms as Ebola, fever, nausea, vomiting. And so uh, we want to make sure that we keep that under control as we're tackling Ebola. Thank you, Dr. What, Shaw. What, one thing I will say, what, what did happen is the healthcare workers got infected early in this response, and that did decimate their health systems. And that's why I think we are dealing with a much more complex situation than we otherwise would. I appreciate your answers. Mr. Connolly is recognized. 